Hi guys, Brown here and welcome to Monaco for round 6 of my F1 2019 career mode here today for part 27 um, if this video started a bit differently basically um, when I was recording Monaco um, I, I record with like a USB adapter and I plugged the USB into the wrong port so it was just lagging every time I tried to show you the qualifying intro so we're just going to go straight into qualifying and this is our first run and we get held up by Ricardo and make contact with Ricardo see he hits the wall and that's pretty much this lap over I'm going to finish it anyway just in case it was good enough but I can tell you that it wasn't um, if you missed the last episode in Spain um, watch that before you see this one I will link it down in the description below along with all the other rounds in a playlist down below as well so we're on to our second lap this is still straight after the next one this is the same set of tyres and you may have noticed that when I was crawling around to start my flying lap we had an orange gearbox and that's exactly what's happened here the gearbox has jammed and it's cost us in qualifying on this second run and we were we were green in sector one and that's pretty much this lap so we're going to crawl back to the pits and we're going to skip on to the end of the session and we're going to go again this would be the one and only run getting into key two you can see we're going very slowly just to get a clear run of course you don't want to be near any cars in monaco and it just get very busy so into turn one we go that was decent enough i'm going to be thinking this video what the corners are called i know they're called something um let me know in the comments below but into sec after sector one we've gone purple and now into sector two we've clipped the barrier at the Nobel chicane now heading down into the back but we've turned in too early we've hit the inside barrier we've bounced into the outside barrier and we are out of qualifying we've crashed out in Monaco and just when it looked like this qualifying couldn't get any worse we've crashed and we're going to be starting down in 17th for tomorrow's race so let's get into it Motor racing has come a long way since the first Grand Prix of the early 20th century. We have faster cars, bigger circuits, highly trained drivers who've dedicated their lives to racing. But still, we return here. Still, it remains the most desired victory in Formula One. Still, we race the Monaco Grand Prix. We're on the French Riviera once more this weekend at the two-mile-long Circuit de Monaco. The cars will climb around 40 metres up the hill, past the casino, and then descend downwards towards the harbour through Sector 2. It's a very short run from pole position to the first of the 19 corners at Sandovot. And don't expect to see much overtaking here today. And it's an absolute pleasure to be joined once again by Anthony Davidson. Let's talk about Brown. No grip penalties, no mitigating circumstances, just a poor qualifying performance and a very disappointing start position for them today. They'll have a sinking feeling as they look up from the cockpit and realise they're in a different postcode to the start line for sure. But the one positive they can hold on to is that the car is quick and they can make their way through the field. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position and Max Verstappen lines up alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Gasly, Antonio Giovinazzi and Hulkenberg, Norris, Bottas, Butler and Alexander Albon, Perez, Vettel, Robert Kubica, Brown, Magnussen. They'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Ricardo, Lance Stroll and George Russell. Weber and Roman Grosjean sits at the back of the grid. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. So we're actually going to start in 14 half penalties, two Ferraris getting a one two. So we're gonna do a one stop from the hards onto the mediums. But it was at this point that I realised I'd been a complete numpty and I'd gone straight into the race without replacing my gearbox so we're just going to have to hope 
that it doesn't jam or we don't need a gear in this race the five of lights come on here in Monaco the lights go out and we're underway it's Ferrari v Ferrari into turn one and Claire I think it was got an awful start and he's been jumped by Hamilton so we're going wheel to wheel we gained a few positions there from 14th going wheel to wheel with the Williams of Robert Kubica and we've made contact with Robert Kubica we've spun Robert Kubica into the barrier we'll just we'll see that again in just a second as we go into Mirabeau and now into the hairpin we're going to go for a lunge down the inside and what's the racing point doing it's just like reversing what is he doing there and we're going to skip on round Portier and now in and through the tunnel as we head down towards the Nobel chicane into the Nobel chicane we go and let's just have a look so you can see we just clipped um, Robert Kubica's rear tyre spun him round and he just blocks off the car park I think it was him in the actual uh, Monaco Grand Prix this is it from our point of view we just tap his rear tyre tire and send him round um, it was my fault I went for a gap that just didn't exist as we skip on then and here comes Vettel down our inside if you were around on the channel um, this time last season in Monaco you know we had a battle with Vettel there and it didn't end well for him he ended up using half his front wing you also know last year in Monaco it was only half a race because my editing program didn't work but down the inside goes Vettel he clipped the barrier with his rear tyre and he spun himself round oh my god is this Vettel clips the rear tyre and now he's just sat there and oh my god there's Perez Perez has come out of nowhere and hit the, the alpha of Vettel that must have been scary being in Vettel's um, car and now that is the onboard for Perez just comes around the corner and suddenly there's an alpha sitting there on the racing line and this is another look at it then he just clips the barrier with his rear tyre and that's pretty much his race over front wing damage for Sergio Perez but as we skip on a couple of laps it's going to be game over for Vettel anyway his engine has gone bang going through the casino and he is out of the Monaco Grand Prix as we skip on a couple of laps and we're, we're just kind of lurking to be honest I was really kind of looking at the gearbox I've never been so like looking at the gear changes trying to do them myself and here this is a, an overhead shot and we're going to go for the move on Alex Alban down the inside into oh, I forgot what it's called don't quote me on that we'll just we'll, just, we'll leave it at that as um as now we go into turn one and my worst nightmares happened the gearbox has jammed and you can see we're just stuck we can go up the gears but the engine's just revving its nuts off to get through them and you can see Alex Alban has just blitzed past us and look at the time it's already gained on us going through the tunnel because it's already through and we've gone straight on at the Nobel Ch uh, at the Nobel chicane and this weekend just went from worse to even worse to absolutely dreadful we're just stuck here in any gear it's all right going down but going up as we skip on a lap and we've lost 11 seconds in a single lap on Alex Alban and we've been caught by Sergio Perez who earlier on we saw make that contact with Vettel and we're just going round now I was thinking it was best to stay out because these things they sort of sometimes you know if you get um, a you lose a gear or something it, it, after a couple of laps it does come back but this just didn't and I was going round and round this was the second lap so Perez got past us and now I just at this point I was like what's the point so I slowed down and to be honest my only last kind of instinct was to try and pit be 
because sometimes that fixes issues. So we're gonna pit here. We have to actually hold up a massive train there. So we're gonna pit, and I'm, and they're gonna change the tyres. But I'm just gonna sit here for a minute and just see if it sorts itself out. And we're just gonna have to wait and see if it does. Hopefully it does. If we trundle down the pit lane and I'll cross the line, we turn the pit limiter off and the and we put our foot down and the engine is still revving its nuts off because we're still jammed in gears and now we're being lapped, we're a lap down now and it's still there, you can see it's just, just devastating and to be honest, my only decision now we're going to go straight on at Mirabeau and we are going to retire from the Monaco Grand Prix such a shame after the win out in Spain but if it was my fault not changing the gearbox for the race taking that penalty so it's only myself to blame suited to the conditions out on track the driver did everything that was expected of them in the moment to really execute the team's plan to perfection a shining example of how f1 really is a team sport here come our winners now a thrilling race and a tremendous effort by ferrari their history is well known so it's no surprise to fans the world over to see them come out on top once again So, Charles Leclerc wins his home Grand Prix, so, um, Ferrari won two, and we've lost that massively now in the championship to Charles Leclerc, if you remember coming into this race we were only two points behind, in the constructors there's drop points as well, but Gasly had a strong weekend so that wasn't too bad, we're going to cut back into the paddock, there was an interview with Claire, but to be honest, she was just asking some stupid questions that I could not be bothered for after that retirement. So I'm not really going to put you through that and show you that. But we're instantly going to change the gearbox. And you may have seen there with that we've actually got the best car on the grid. I don't really believe that. Um, yeah, we had good pace, but the Ferraris are very strong. The Alphas are strong. The Mercedes are still very strong. We're going to do a couple of upgrades here on the engine side. Especially the types of tracks that are coming up next. We've got Canada, next and France and Austria, Silverstone. They're all power tracks. And we're also going to, going to do an upgrade on the chassis side as well. There's no race highlights. So, so until Canada, goodbye.